you know when the most prominent figures from any industry are involved in a scandal it's bound to make rounds in the newspapers and media for months take the trial of johnny depp and amber heard for example their entire scandalous relationship was known by many who eagerly waited for news every day one such case that i have for you today is tagged as one of the most scandalous ones in the history of barcelona the police at the time managed to solve the case in just 2 days but with the power that these culprits held it wasn't difficult to maneuver the justice system the story involves the lives of businessmen in high society in the franco regime's political society and the one who binds them all together was a prostitute who was killed by the same men who would shower her with gifts and praises with multiple suicides and several theories the case of carmen brotto is one twisted tale of power and greed My name is Tanvi and this week we are off to Spain. In today's case there were only a few articles that extensively covered the story when it initially happened. However, over the years a lot of the information about the case has changed leading to contradictions depending on the article that I was reading. As a result, the timeline and theories surrounding the case may not be consistent. but i've gathered all the available stories to create better connections and understanding also before i start the case i just wanted to thank you all for listening to the episodes so far and to bring you more dark and twisted cases the podcast will be on a short break as i'm trying to improve the storytelling and listening experience the episodes will resume on the 6th of july so stay tuned for more gruesome and horrifying murder cases Carmen Brotto, formerly known as Carmen Brotos, was born on 9th April 1922, a hundred years ago, in Casa Perdina de Cuaso, in the village of Usca, in northeastern Spain. As a child, she moved to Boltana to live with her uncles, and once she became an adult, she moved to Barcelona in search of better living conditions. There, she started working in the domestic sector. but as she spent more time being a helper she faced the harsh realities of working in the domestic sector and decided to enter the world of prostitution in order to make more money carmen was a beautiful lady with an attractive physique and strong personality she came in contact with a lot of characters in high society she became a well known prostitute and started catering to the men who held powerful positions in the city One of them was named Ramon Pane who gave her one of his flats where she could reside and even provided her with a monthly allowance for a year and a half. The timeline of this entire case is right in the middle of Francisco Franco's regime and he had set some distinctive rules and regulations. Few people supported the work that he did and others did not. So naturally there were people who opposed Franco's ideologies. and one such person the colonel of the civil guard who defended barcelona from the assault of jordan franco's troops shared the same surname as carmen now i don't have enough information about this said gentleman but from what i gathered it would have been harmful for carmen to share the same surname as the general hence to stay clear of any kind of trouble carmen changed her surname from brotos to broto She also came across one more person named Julio Munoz Ramone who was known as El Rey del Estraperlo in the underworld and was also the owner of the store named El Aquila. He was in a relationship with Carmen despite being married to Carmen Villalonga. Yes, he was married to a Carmen and was dating another Carmen. Carmen Villalonga was the daughter of the president of one of the most popular banks in the country 
which made him a prominent figure in the high society. A Gallican businessman named Julio Martinez Penas, owner of a theater in Barcelona named Tivoli, used to live in a rich hotel and used his relationship with Carmen to hide his sexuality. With the number of people she became affiliated with, they started showering her with prizes and protected her in the community. She started making her own name and became well known among those people. Slowly, she accumulated a small fortune for herself and had a beautiful collection of jewelry which she would often wear and show off in public. Among the people whom she spent time with, she got acquainted with a man named Jesus Navarro Mano, who was the son of a retired professional thief, some would say, named Jesus Navarro Caro. Caro was known for his skills in breaking safes and stealing their contents. Among the friends that she made while she visited bars and clubs near her home, she met Jamie Venus Prath, an employee at the locksmith shop at Encarnacion Street. However, the owner of the shop was none other than Caro, the same retired thief. It has been speculated that the son, Manau, had an intimate relationship with Jamie. So far, we know that she knew multiple people in high places, had earned quite a name for herself in the area, and was in a complicated relationship with one as well. But her entire life came crashing down on 10th of January, 1949. In the afternoon of 10th of January, the one with whom she had the complicated relationship called Broto, informing her that he will be getting married to his current girlfriend and would relocate to Mallorca. But as a way to relive the time that they had spent together, he asked Carmen to go out for one last night, partying and reminiscing the nights they spent together. Carmen happily agreed. Till 9pm, she spent her time in Peralda with a businessman. Once she reached home, Manav was already waiting for her in his rented Ford sedan. However, Manav was not alone in the car. He was accompanied by an employee from his father's store. Jamie. So, in the car, Manav was in the driving seat, while Carmen took the passenger seat, and Jamie was in the back. Now, there's confusion whether Caro, Manav's father, was already in the car or he joined the trio later, but I am going with the latter for the rest of the case. So, along with Manav and Jamie, Carmen visited various bars on Rosalind and Casanova Street. She had high tolerance for alcohol, hence they were able to spend a lot of time hopping bars and getting drunk. After the last drink, the three of them got into the rented sedan with no real destination in mind, or so it seemed. As their car left the bustling area, Jamie struck Carmen in her head with a heavy wooden mallet. But Carmen did not give up. She fought for her safety and started defending herself by hitting Jamie. Looking at the altercation in the back seat, Manav stopped the car and decided to help Jamie to stop Carmen from hitting them. But before he got that chance, Carmen jumped out of the car and started running away from the scene, only to fall unconscious after a few steps. Manav and Jamie dragged her body and put her in the car. At the time, the car was parked right in front of the hospital. They didn't want anyone to witness the crime. However, the hospital security guard saw them. The two managed to convince the guard that the lady was simply drunk and they were just getting her back to her house. No news article mentioned whether the guard saw any blood or Carmen's body or even her face as the incident occurred in the middle of the night. Two along with the unconscious body of Carmen, drove to a garden in Kai Legalidad, the place where they decided to meet Manav's father, Caro. As Caro confirmed that Carmen had died, they removed all of her jewelry and buried her in the ground. So, Carmen Broto died on 10th of January 1949 at the age 
of 26 years. The entire procedure took them 45 minutes. Once they had finished their business, the three of them walked towards the car that was parked 800 meters away and tried to start it. But as the temperature was cold, the car backfired, which created a sound of a gunshot that filled the silent night, alerting a security guard nearby. As the guard came to check on the car, he found it lying abandoned as no one was near it. Once he came closer to inspect its condition, he was shocked to see the interiors and quickly alerted law enforcement. The rented Ford sedan with the number plate V9934 had its interiors covered in blood. Not sure if it was the driver's side or the back side, but the right door was damaged. It looked like someone had tried to remove the number plate forcefully, but was unable to do so. Once the law enforcement arrived, they found multiple clues which could help them construct a definitive timeline and analyze the crime that might have taken place. Inside the car, they found a wooden mallet, a black glove, and a purse. Inside the purse, there were 280 pesetas, toiletries, a rationing card, and a photograph which contained four people. The police were able to trace their steps back with the blood stains that were found in the car and on the ground. As they started following the stains, it led them to the same garden where Carmen was buried a few hours ago. They found a shovel which was covered in dirt and blood lying on the ground. Her body was not completely buried as they found her in the ground partially covered with mud. The police formed a theory based on the presence of a wooden mallet in the vicinity and the visible head injury on Carmen. They speculated that she was killed with the mallet and subsequently buried in that location in an attempt to conceal her body. Her body was then transferred to the clinic hospital while the police went to her house to get any more clues. When they entered her house, they found that some of the jewellery that she owned was missing assuming that the people who killed her also robbed her house. But Carmen wasn't the only dead person that night. Now, as the case is almost 60 or 70 years old, there is contradicting information related to a lot of details in the case. For example, one of the articles suggests that the garden, which was near the store that Caro owned, was also owned by him while other articles suggest that the garden was rented just a few nights ago. Anyway, as the police found out about the three people who were seen with Carmen, they soon had a rough timeline on their hands. Once they reached to talk to them one by one, they found out that Carmen's death won't be the only dead body that they will have to deal with that night. The three people, Jamie, Caro and Mano, after burying Carmen's body, came to Caro's house to clean the blood on their hands, literally. As the police found out that Caro owned or rented the garden where Carmen was buried, they reached his house to talk to him and ask him more questions. But once they entered the house, they found his dead body. Simultaneously, Jamie rented a room at Menti's Ball Hotel at around 6 a.m. Again, there is misleading information about the person who knocked on his door. But according to one article, the owner of the hotel went to knock and when no one answered the door, they opened it to check the situation inside. And that's when they found the body of Jamie lying on the bed. Upon reaching the scene, the police concluded that Jamie's death appeared to be a suicide. A bottle of potassium cyanide was discovered on the nightstand alongside a bottle of liquor. So, with two out of three potential suspects dead, the police focused on finding the whereabouts of Mano. Before his father died in his house, Mano contacted his uncle via a telegram and informed him that he and his girlfriend will be reaching Mallorca soon. He wasn't seen since 12th of January, two days after Carmen's death, and he was completely unaware of his father's apparent suicide as well. 
when he was captured near the port area, he confessed to killing Carmen Brotto. When police investigated Caro's wife and asked her about the time they came inside the house, she stated that only Caro and Jamie had entered the house and denied Mano's appearance during that time, inadvertently denying Mano's hand in the killing. She would later change her statement and agree that the three of them had entered the house together. Meanwhile, the medical examiner named Alvarez Martinez conducted an autopsy on the bodies of Jamie, Caro, and Carmen. He stated that among several injuries on her body, Carmen had suffered a fracture in the base of the skull, which ultimately caused her death. On the other hand, Caro had died of poisoning, but it was never determined whether it was a suicide or if the poison was forcefully injected. But the doctor was confident that Jamie, who had also died of poisoning, purposefully injected the poison. During that time, Manos' mother and girlfriend provided conflicting statements, which created inconsistencies in the case. However, after the trial, Considering all the evidence and testimonies, Manon was ultimately sentenced to death. But that is not the final outcome. Due to the pressure of the influential people who knew Manon and his father, the court was forced to change their sentence from death to just 30 years in prison. And that's not all. Once he was sentenced, he was transferred to Okanya prison, but due to his quote-unquote good behavior, the court pardoned him for the rest of the sentence and only served 10 years in prison for planning, killing and disposing of the body of Carmen Brotto. There were a lot of theories which surrounded Carmen's death. From the things that I read, the one which seemed the most plausible is as follows. Mano, who had a girlfriend and was also spending time with Carmen, was going through financial troubles. Either he had to pay money to some powerful people or the people who used to pay him for some work completely stopped the money flow. In both the cases, there was a shortage of money and to get more, he decided to rob someone from the high society. Realizing that Carmen was affiliated to some of the richest men in the city, he started listing down the names of those businessmen until he found one, Juan Martinez Peñas, the one who was using their relationship to hide his homosexuality. Manau knew Carmen's relationship with him and thought that Carmen could lead them to his house, to Juan Martinez's house, so that they can steal money from it. But when Carmen refused to do so, Manau, along with Jamie, killed her. Later, the two went to Carmen's house and stole some, not all, of the jewellery that she owned. The police never managed to find the stolen jewellery. And this is just one. Another theory suggests that Carmen blackmailed one of her clients with a photograph. She had a photo which contained one of her clients having sex with a minor and threatened to expose him in front of everyone, which is why she lost her life. One more theory suggests that she was the mistress of the boss of the Franco regime and hence she lost her life because people feared that she might know too much. Another version suggested that either Caro or Manau found out that Carmen was a police informant and would work as an informer for the regime's enemies, which ultimately resulted in her death. And these are just the theories. The number of questions that rose after her death are no less. Even with this plethora of theories, no one knows the exact reason of her murder. If the main reason was to steal her jewellery, then why did Caro and Jamie kill themselves? It felt as if they were silenced for the crime that took place, rather than losing their lives to the fear of having both of their names associated with the killing. Who were the influential people who helped Manau get out of the prison? 
did they know something which could potentially tarnish their reputation in the high society was she genuinely killed for money or was someone jealous of all the name and fortune that she had earned in a few years we will never know even with the questions the mystery of carmen's life and death is still inked in the form of books and scripts telling people the story of a girl who could have led a normal life whose only dream was to live a respectable and stable life but the people surrounding her changed her life's trajectory for the reasons which sounded human and diabolical Thank you for listening to the case of Carmen Broto. Your feedbacks and reviews help me make your listening experience better. So leave us a review wherever you are listening. As I mentioned in the beginning, the new episodes of Shades of Macabre will be released from 6th of July. So don't forget to subscribe or follow our podcast so that you can be the first one to listen to the new case. As always, you can find the images related to the cases covered on the podcast in the episode notes. And if there's a case you want us to cover or if you just want to say hi, drop us a message on Instagram at Shades of Macabre. We will be back soon. Till then, take care and be safe.